Hi, and welcome to the Little Fireface Podcast by the Little Fireface Project. My name is Kylie, and I'll be your host and guide to all things Slow Loris. This week, we're celebrating Slow Loris Outreach Week and talking with some of the people who know these animals best about their work with Slow Lorises. Today, I'm speaking with Professor Vincent Nyman, who studies lorises as well as other primates and animals in the wildlife trade. Let's take a listen. Um, my name is Vincent Nyman. I'm a professor in anthropology at Oxford Brookes University. Could you tell us a little bit about what you do in some of your work with slow lorises? My work with slow lorises is mainly related to the trade, as in their, their trade for pets and partially trade for medicinal purposes in various parts in Asia. And that involves the trade in um, so-called bird markets or animal markets, in wild meat markets, but also the online trade um, on Facebook and Instagram. So the wildlife trade, that's a pretty big conservation threat to these animals? Um, Yes, it is. And it it varies a bit in which part of, of Asia we are. So in Indonesia, mainly Indonesia, uh, we see slow lorises being traded as pets. Um, some people still think they are suitable pets. They're not. Um, and this trade used to happen a lot in the open animal markets, but now has moved largely online. Um, and the trade we see in uh, mainland Southeast Asia is mainly for medicinal purposes and they are traded um, not alive but dead and in their parts. So if someone listening to this podcast was thinking about getting a slow loris as a pet, what would you tell them? Uh, get a gerbil. <laughs> um, there's, there's a reason why wild animals are wild animals and why domesticated animals are domesticated animals. Um, it, it takes a long time for an animal to become a suitable pet um, and there are plenty of choices dogs, cats, gerbils, uh, goldfish um, but slow horses are not, not suitable. So in your experience what have been some of the biggest challenges to what you do working in the wildlife trade and what have been some of your biggest successes and the most rewarding experiences? Let me think. It may not always be a pleasant job. Uh, You may not always end up in the most glamorous or exciting places. You may not really like what you see. Um, Animals in cages or animals being treated uh, um, unfairly, in a sense, or um, seeing animals being dead and and being traded in their parts um, is not always a pleasant, pleasant sight. Um, sometimes it's a little bit of a um, hopeless job where it seems as if nothing changes, it only gets worse. Um, and I think some of the greatest successes is that, weirdly enough, that we are talking about this now. Um, I think that perhaps 10, 15, 20 years ago, it would have been almost inconceivable that we would have a discussion about the trade in slow lorises not because they were not traded, but simply because no one was paying attention to them. And we can only expect some change to happen, as in positive change, when people openly discuss it and try to find solutions. Could you tell us a little bit about what a typical market looks like and how and in what circumstances you might see slow lorises there? So I can give you some examples. So uh, the different markets of, are, as I said, very different. Some of it is for pets, some of it is, is for, for medicinal trade. I remember one market where I've been quite a few times. Uh, it's called Mong La. It's in Myanmar on the border with China. And um, what we see there is in the morning, early in the morning, all types of uh, uh, wild animals, either freshly killed wild animals or still alive wild animals are brought in. Uh, that includes slow lorises. So on a, on a typical day we may have say 5, 10, 15 slow lorises being brought in in small cages. They've been caught probably the night before or, 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 or even before that 
in the surrounding countryside. They are being brought to the markets and then they're typically um, sold when alive and then when the, the customer buys them uh, they are being slaughtered on the spot and taken down to their individual parts and that's how they're being sold. Um, and it's actually a very, very um, heartbreaking thing to see. You see these lovely, very cute, uh, threatened, globally threatened uh, primates arriving in the market. And you know that if you visit the, the, that, that same market by the end of the day, uh, they've all been, 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 been killed. And we've tried to, by making repeat visits to the markets, to get an idea of the number of, of slow lorises that are being essentially used uh, and consumed in this market. And we have to think indeed of the hundreds of slow lorises uh, a year. And that's mainly actually in that particular case to uh, meet the demand that clearly is there for slow loris parts um, in, in China. This week we're talking about slow loris outreach week. And promoting solarist conservation. So what can people do either this week or hopefully beyond to promote solarist conservation in their daily lives? Um, I'd say for those of you that are from China um, or from uh, Southeast Asia, um, don't buy any Loris products. Um, don't buy it because you shouldn't buy it, uh, but also don't buy it because it's illegal. In not a single country, where slow lorises occur in the wild, is it legal to actually sell them or to buy them? Uh, so that will be a good uh, tip. Don't do anything illegal. Uh, for us that may visit those areas, um, when we come in contact with slow lorises for sale, first of all, don't buy them. Um, there's a famous saying that uh, the selling stops if the buying stops. Um, so we have to not buy them, uh, it doesn't do any good for any of us or for the lorises. Um, second, in some particular cases, in southern Thailand, also in other places, um, you can have your photograph taken with slow lorises. Um, again, I would politely decline, don't do it. And then finally, some of this trade happens online, which you can basically um, access and, 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 and buy from any uh, a computer in the world uh, so again don't do that thank you so much for listening to the little firebase podcast this week we're premiering one episode every day in honor of slow loris outreach week so stay tuned to learn more about the little firebase project check out www.noctorama.org and find us on social media we are at Little Fireface on Twitter and Instagram and Little Fireface Project on Facebook. To show off your own slow lore's pride and let us know what you think of the Little Fireface podcast, use the hashtag slow2019. The Little Fireface podcast is hosted and produced by me, Kylie Sorensen, with special thanks to Professor Vincent Nyman. Music by Poddington Bear.